Hello, good evening. How are you doing, people? Good? Good evening, teacher. How are you? Hey, good, Ivan. How about you? No, uh, well, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. some tired because okay. We are already finishing building uh, the house. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Our family uh, from the, our CBI. Okay. So you're, you're building, building, ah, okay. building a house for a family? See, yeah. Ah, family. Okay. Where? Yeah, because yeah, which was very damaged yeah, for the last stay. Raining. Uh huh. Um, if we are building your house and we'll send delivery it to the benefit benefit family. Male and shit male, but they will be better than before. Uh, I feel happy because yes, the, we are building your house is necessary for them. Oh, uh, good evening, teacher. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, just uh, away too far away, or you're listening to uh. To, how do you say that? The opposite of loud? Low. To soft. Low. To low. 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 Okay. okay. And now? Mm, it's getting better, but not that much. From my side, you're breaking up. Okay. They must be the. Oh, now, now it's, it's good. Yeah, I think it has to do with the. Uh, has to do with the. Maybe with the. Now it's good. With the, with the internet, maybe. Because it seems it's not really working properly. Okay. But now it's improving. Okay, you let me know then if you have problems to listen to me. Okay, thank you, Oscar. Hey, hello, Joselino. How was the weekend? Nice teacher. Oh, okay, good. A lot of work? Yes. Uh, uh, more or less. Okay, good. No, the normal. Normal. Okay. Good. In okay. my house. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that, that's us. Uh, you know, when we are in the house, we always have a lot of work too, right? So we always have things to do. The you have work in your yes. in your office or your company, and then in the house is the same. That you have to fix 
different things, right? Or paint or fix or clean. Ah. Yes, it's yes, it's for it's for that the Monday is very very difficult to start. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We we feel very tired of the weekend. Yeah. Wow, that happens to me, you know. This weekend I was working in the house, fixing some things, putting up some lights for Christmas. And then yes. I yeah, yesterday <laughs> in the evening I was very tired. <laughs> and this and this, mor this morning I didn't want to get up. Uh, I said, oh no, this is okay, but you know, little by little we are going we are recovering the energy that we lost during the uh, week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That's nice. Hello, Carla, Selena. How are you? Hello, teacher. Fine, thank you. All right, good. How was the weekend? It was amazing. I went with my, my family. Okay, good. Where, where did you go? Santa Ana. Where? Cabañas. Cabañas. Okay, yes. yeah. Ah, that's a nice place. Near Ilovasco, near Ilovasco, right? Yes. Now it it was uh is in the party. party in holiday. Uh, yes. I don't know. The patron party. Yes. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Good. That's nice. Yes, my father-in-law was from uh, San Suntepeque. You know, and then I that's why I, I went a couple of times to San Tunte and it was very mm -hmm. nice. There was a, a little town there was a little town the name is uh Wakotec. Oh oh I I uh, know. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's very it's very famous, very popular. Yes, very popular <laughs> in Christmas for this season. Uh -huh. The park is amazing, the decoration is good. Okay. To spend the time with the family and visiting places. Yes. Okay. Well, I can have a little tour probably this this Christmas around Sultepec in that area. Yeah, this is a nice place. Yeah, good. this is a good idea. Yeah, just to relax and do something different. Yeah. Okay, good. Nice. Okay, people, let's get started. I think that uh, so we're already in, so we have four, eight, twelve. 15 people now uh, there are some missing but let me uh, show you the exercise we're going to have a listening exercise that has to do with listening it says go over the information there is a quiz show and we have to get some um, occupation right there is a description there is a description of an occupation. First, we're going to we are going to check the vocabulary in this uh, okay, here. For example, we have a a casting director. We have a location scout, spring writer, a dialect coach, a prop designer, and a script doctor. So then a we also have here the description and we have to match uh, the audio according to the to the description for example uh, who finds an appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world so we have to check from these six occupations uh, someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie it has to be one of these six people. Uh, three, who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic? Creates the objects that the character use. Uh, someone who develops and expands a story into a full movie script. And then we have a language, it's a language specialist who works with actors on their accents, right? So that they can sound more natural. Okay, uh, who is used when an original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes, 
funnier and dialogues more realistic. Okay. Any questions about the vocabulary? Words or expressions? Sure, just, just uh, you have a, can, can you uh -huh. use just an idea, but uh, I know that this is what this uh, task is about, but um, what does uh, location scout mean, for example? Location? Scout. Ah, location is scout. <clears throat> scout, in this case, is the, a, a person who is looking for a specific, let's say, uh, people who have some uh, determined skills. For example, there are scouts uh, around the world who are, for example, searching for football players. Uh, sometimes they are searching for basketball players. Uh, sometimes they are searching for, uh, let's say, uh, new talents, okay? And then, okay, so in this be case, someone that, mm -hmm. okay, so be someone that hound down uh, people, talented, talented exactly. people. Exactly, hunting okay. down, you know, yes. And also okay. in this case is the, the place, right? For example, suppose that they want to make a, um, for, they want to, uh, have you seen the Star Wars movies? The movies of the Star Wars? There is, no. there is there is a scene there is a scene that when uh when the spaceship is flying over many many trees there is a jungle you know and that ja and that jungle is in Guatemala in Tikal and then these people you know when the when they make this uh, landing of the of the spaceship in the movie so the place that you see there is uh, Tikal in Guatemala. So these people are looking for places, okay, this is what we need, many trees and this and that, okay, and then these scouts, they said, okay, in Guatemala, there is a place like that. And probably it is cheaper for the movie company to go to Guatemala. Probably there is one better in Brazil, let's say, in the Amazon. But yeah, but not to move to Brazil, it's too expensive. Then Guatemala is closer, probably it's going to be cheaper. And then they this this is the job of the scout to find these places, the most uh, a, how can we say this the most proper places for the company right the most adequate, and that is benefit also for the company. Okay, so that is a location scout. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Good. So then, uh, let's see what else we have uh, here. Now let's listen to the conversations. I'm going to play the audio and, and I will show you the, the quiz. Page 95, exercise nine. Perspectives, quiz show, part A. Listen to a quiz show. Can you guess the occupations? One, a blank who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world. Two, a blank is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Three, a blank who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic creates the objects that the characters use. Four, a blank is someone who develops and expands a story idea into a full movie script. Five, a blank is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Six, a blank who is used when an original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, 
and dialogues more realistic. Okay, so now we have to match now here who is who. Okay, so we have the first one. <clears throat> okay, this one. Who is in the number one? Casting director, location scout. I think location, location scout. scout teacher. Location scout, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Location. Scout. Good. What about the number? Uh, micro, there's a microphone on. Okay, now it's better. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then location scout. What about number two? Casting director, teacher. Casting director, yes. So, okay, so we have the casting. Remember, casting is the the, the all the people right that work in the movie so that's the casting there i don't know if I, they have to have the capital letters casting director okay how about number three someone who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic Drop designer. Drop designer. Okay, so that's the prop. Okay, prop. I'm going to use the mix. Prop designer. Okay, good. Props, remember that the props are everything in the in the movie, like windows, windows that are broken, uh, knives, okay? So then uh, all the... Uh, all the equipment, all the material, all the things that we see in the movies sometimes, like the guns, the pistols, the knives when they want to kill someone. Okay, so everything they destroy in the movies is the prop designer, right? How about number four? Someone who develops and expands a story. Screenwriter. 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 That's right. The screenwriter. This is a good job. Screenwriter. And five. The language specialist. A coach. Dialect coach. For example, the if you want to be a if they are making a movie about a Spanish people, Spaniards, so they make you speak like an Spaniard, right? So that the the sound of the movie is more realistic. Okay, or if you are Mexican, right? Imagine a Mexican is speaking English. Okay, then say for example, you have to use the same. Uh, intonation right that mexican people use okay and the other one number six a script and, doctor. the script doctor right so the one who makes the, the screenplays long last long so this is script doctor okay let's check I don't know if the capital letters, small letters. Yeah, screenwriter is one. 
Yes, it has to be one one word. And that's it. Okay, there you have all the answers. Location scout, casting director, prop designer, screenwriter, dialect coach, script doctor. Which one would you like to be? Which one do you think is like the most uh, exciting or nice job? Something like that. Oh, this nice. This job is really nice. Location scout, casting director, prop designer, screenwriter, dialect coach, or a script doctor. For me, teacher, casting director. Casting director, yes. Casting director is must be a uh, very interesting, right? Because you have to have control. Oh, many things, okay? People, how the acting, yes. A lot of creativity. What else? What is another one that you like? For example, if you ask me, I would like to have the first one, the location scout. And, well, nowadays, it's, it's nice because you can use uh, a the virtual reality pictures or images, okay? For example, uh, imagine that we want to look at the, the picture that Romeo has in his profile there. Okay, Romeo Vladimir, there is a very nice picture. You can see Romeo like if he's standing on the top of a, of a mountain, right? And then you can see behind him, if you Photoshop, that uh, that image probably you can see, you know Romeo flying right. If you eliminate the area where he's standing and you only see the mountains, so now with this location uh, scout, you know they can also do this job through uh, a technology. Okay, but also you have the chance to to travel right to different places to to explore to explore places. Okay. What about the teacher? Yes, sir. For me, screenwriter. Also, because it's is is like mastermind. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, the screenwriter. You he know, think, is, uh, okay. uh huh. He's in the context, the history, a lot of issues. Yes. And... Include the. the uh huh. Uh, uh, work direction activities yes yeah you know uh you know the story of sylvester stallone and rocky mm, more or less <laughs> okay for example he was the, actually he was the the screenwriter you know he wrote uh, yeah. he wrote the story okay uh he did uh everything and they gave him. I don't remember how much money they offered him for the for the uh, for the script, and they, he he didn't want to sell it because he wanted to be the actor, right, the main character. So that he made more money. Imagine he made how many movies? Like five or six movies. So he made a lot of money. Yeah, screenwriter. Yeah, I mean, can be like you say because it, you are the the brain, right, the mastermind. Yes. Yeah. Now and so is there is a possibility. Uh, for example, you know the lady who wrote uh Harry Potter, uh, the lady who wrote also what is that movie? Um, the Lord, well, the place from the Lord of the Rings. So this okay, people also okay. have made a lot of money writing books, and after they put the the books into movies. Okay, so. It's, it's never too late, Francisco. You can start writing your own, your own movies, right? Screen playing. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah. You never know. <laughs> you can have the first movie in El Salvador. <laughs> okay. You say, for example, traveling, in, tra traveling in, from in was in WhatsApp, Francisco. No, uh, traveling, traveling from San oh, Salvador, yes. traveling from San Salvador <laughs> to Santa Tecla in the one o one, right? <laughs> you know, it, it's an adventure, you know. That bus is, they are flying in the, on the yeah. road. 
<laughs> okay. Or, or, you know, going through Los Chorros traffic. That could be another movie. <laughs> I just, I just for fun, but it's good. It's, uh, you know, you can have a lot of uh, ideas, right? Where to write. Okay. Then, uh, let's see. Thank you very much, people. So we have this one. Uh, by the end of this lesson, participants will learn to understand defining and non-defining relative clauses. Okay, this is a different topic from the passive voice. Do you still have any questions about the passive voice? Let me just remember that for deformation, when you want to create a, a passive voice, remember that we have the minute here. Okay, that we have to to use the verb to be, right? Just going to Okay, so here you have Steven Silver. directed the movie. This is what you have to to remember, right? Now we have Steven Spielberg. So we have the subject. Then we have the, the bear. And then we have the object. Okay, so we have This is just to refresh subject. Okay, remember bear. Here uh, I'm going to write tran transitive. Okay, this is the transitive verb, and then we have. the object. Okay, these are like, you know, the three basic parts of the sentence. And then if you, and this one is active voice. Okay, and here you have the passive voice. Okay, step number one, do the, okay, the, the object of the active voice is the subject, right? The movie it was directed by okay. Steven Spielberg. Good. And why do we use was, Francisco? It's correct, but why? Because it's, it's, the, it's the third person, the pronoun it. And what else? The very in past participle. Ex the verb in past tense. Okay, in the active form, in the active voice, we have to detect 
if the sentence is present, if the sentence is past, or if the sentence is in future, okay? If the sentence is in past, like in this case, then we use exactly the word that says directed. Okay, the movie was directed by, then when I use Steven, okay, a Spielberg, okay? No problem with that? No. no. Good. Good. If we change here, the Steven Spielberg directs the movie. Then what is the passive voice? What is the passive voice? The movie. Uh-huh. Is directed by Steven Spielberg. Perfect. Okay. So, because in this sentence we can see directs, third person, present. Yeah. Then we don't use was, we use is, because the active voice is in present. Mm -hmm. Now, a look at directed is a regular verb, right? That's why it's directed in past, and this is the past participle. This is simple past, this is past participle. Okay, and copy just for you to remember, present, past, future. Okay. Copy this one too. Now, Steven Spielberg, future, will, will be. Okay, so here we're going to use exact will direct. Okay, perfect. Then the passive voice, the movie, uh huh, will be. Correct. The movie will be directed by Steven Spielberg. Okay. And thank you. Can, yes. There's a question. For example, uh, uh, how how is it going to be if you use the, the past perfect tense? The past perfect is going to be the same. It's going to be the same. If you say Steven Spielberg uh, had. It's always, always the same. All you're gonna do is to to change a control C. Okay. I direct it. That's perfect. Okay, and then The movie had been. It's the same with the present perfect, right? Exactly the same, Arlena. You are right. This is past perfect. The other one would be a, a present perfect. Uh -huh. Yes, and you say the movie had been directed by a Steven Spielberg. Okay, or you can also say half the movie. For example, the have you seen the last, not the last, the latest movie of uh, Indiana Jones? No? There is a, a new movie and then uh, that movie has been directed by George Lucas. I think he was the one, the same in the, the same director in Star Wars, and also the special effects. Uh, I think they are uh, Steven Spielberg. So the the movie is, you know, it's really really great, right? Because 
there are two genies of uh, directing and creating special effects in the movie. So that movie, if you see that movie, when you see it, you will like it because the movie has been present perfect, directed by uh, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. It's a creation of those two masterminds, right? In directing movies and special effects. So you can see here you have past tense, right? Then you have simple present, okay, simple past, simple past, simple present, simple present, passive voice, future, simple future, a simple future in passive voice, past perfect, okay, in the active voice, and the past perfect in the passive voice. And also you can have the present perfect. Remember, that's what I told you. The passive voice is not a tense. A pa the passive voice is a different way to say the same things, okay? So if you see the active voice and the passive voice, you don't change the meaning. We change only the form. The, the passive voice sounds more, uh, obviously more formal than the active voice. Okay. No questions? If you want, you can take a screenshot of this so that you can remember the examples. Okay, that we have for the different tenses. Okay. Then, and in our next topic, that we have the defining and non-defining relative clauses. This is also uh, first, probably, uh, it's good to know what a clause is, right? Remember that a clause is a sentence, right? Okay, I close. Okay, oh. Okay, it's a sentence. Sometimes it is a complete sentence and sometimes it is not a complete sentence. So when it is not a complete a complete sentence, they call it a for example the independent and dependent clause. Dependent is because you the sentence depends of another sentence to complete the message. Okay. And when it's independent, then you can have a sentence and the sentence is a complete idea okay so then that's why when you have clauses sometimes you have two sentences in one okay sometimes the two you separate the two sentences and they have meaning sometimes you separate the sentence but one has meaning but is missing the complement of the other or one doesn't have the meaning until you complement it with the other sentence okay I'll show you some examples here and after we I continue with the explanation. Now let's see the video. Okay, and let me expand it first. I will turn off my 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 camera because of the image so that I do not slow down the video. Okay, here we go who finds places to shoot scenes, travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. 
Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. Is. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very... Okay. Check this example first. So this is... The defining or non defining? This defining. Is the defining, right? Defining the, the actor who stare in that movie is very talented. In this case, for example, if I say it only, the actor is very talented. Which actor? Okay, so you see the information. It, it's good. The sentence is good. The actor is very talented. No problem, right? So you can say, yeah, okay, good sentence. Has a subject, verb, and complement. Okay? But a complete information is not given. But if I say, for example, uh, probably you don't know the name of the actor. Okay? For example, the actor who starred in uh, Indiana Jones is very talented. Ah, okay. Who can you say the main the actor who is the main as the main character in Indiana Jones is very talented. Who is that actor? Who knows the name of that actor? For one hundred dollars, what's the name of the? <laughs> you may make a competition, right? In a contest. Okay, that's yes, Sarah. Okay, who is the actor? So you say Harrison Ford, right? You say about Harrison Ford, yes. Then you say, for example, the actor who starred in that movie. Then we know okay, that we are referring to the men in that specific movie and then is very talented he has a talent okay so then in this case all the information is necessary and you do not see the commas look at the next one the next one is the non-defining talented number two non-defining relative clauses the information isn't necessary it is extra information that is added to the sentence for example, 
Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. Okay, this is extra information that probably, you know, is not really necessary, right? Because if I say Tom Cruise is very talented, okay, we know that he has the movies like, uh, for example, the Vanilla Eyes, uh, Mission Impossible, okay, uh, what is another movie that he has? Uh, the... Uh, what's the name of this old movie that has two parts? Hotel. Which one? A Top Gun or Top Gun? Yeah, that one, that one, Top Gun, Top Gun, right? The last, the last Samurai. Oh, yeah, The Last Samurai, too, yes, okay. So I think, you know, imagine he has the Top Gun, The Last Samurai, uh, Vanilla Ice is a little bit confusing movie, but he's good acting. And we also have the uh, Mission the movie. Movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, you can see that he is very talented. So it's not necessary to say who is star in that movie. You may extract who is star in that movie, and the sentence is still, uh, let's say, makes sense and gives you the information that you need. Because you are using the name of the actor, right? And then it's not necessary. I mean, it's extra information. But it's not a, a necessary not to to make it more uh, clearer. Okay, now listen. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Okay, and then you can see the commas. As the lady mentions here, the comma, the Tom Cruise comma, who starred in that movie comma is very talented, okay? So then that is the non-defining. Commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Why relative clause? Because the who starred in that movie is related to the, to the actor and to the talent. So it has relation, okay? It's not out of context, okay? That's why they call it, but it's really not to define. Sure. How about the people involved in making a movie? Yeah. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. Yes. Yes, Oscar. That's a very simple question. Uh, what's the purpose in uh, to let's say, for example, with the uh, not defining rel relative clauses to to give uh, uh, extra information, which is not necessary. What's the purpose of this? And this is like a, a little bit confusing. No, uh, no, not really. It's just uh, uh, sometimes people might consider to uh, just to enhance a little more the information that you give it and not to make it look so, so plain, right? The information that you are, okay, you say uh, Tom Cruise is talented. Oh, okay, right. But when you say, "Hey, you know, Tom Cruise, uh, you know the the actor," <laughs> actually, we use it a lot in Spanish too. The actor who they say Tom Cruise, who acted in Mission Impossible, uh, you know, is a real good. He's a real good actor. Okay, he's a real good actor. He's a very talented actor. So we are just giving some information just to make you know like to to give the the sense that you know more about the topic, okay? But in the end, it's just a, just a, it's a style, it's a form, right? But you can use only that he's very talented. You know, Tom Cruise is a very talented. Uh, you can also use other tenses. Instead of giving more information, you know, Tom Cruise has always been considered to be a very talented uh, actor. And you are not using a relative, uh, non-defined relative clause. So it's just a style, not a, I mean, you can, you can either use it or not use it. Okay. And then there are, if you want to sound more eloquent, there are other tenses also that you can use. And that's basically the, the use, right? But it's always good to know. It's always good to know that sometimes it's going to be proper to use it. And we, and actually, 
um, unconsciously, we use it a lot, even in Spanish. Okay, let's see, we have. Okay, try to, I mean, write in the chat. I'm going to show you the first one. Yes, this one. Look at these two examples. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. You say a uh, dialect coach is a language specialist. Okay. And then look at this. Uh, this is the other thing um, that you can use. She works with actors on their accents. Okay. So you have two sentences. Then when we use defining or non-defining, that's what I told you before, that you can embed, you can put together two sentences. And they have a dialect coach, okay, is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Okay, then we use, for example, who or that to put the two sentences together. Why do you think that we use the this structure here, the first one? Read the first one and read the second and tell me what is the logic, the logic that you find in using the sentence on the left versus the one on the right. Take a look at it, read it, and give me your opinion. Anybody can answer. Okay, anybody? Okay, let me see, I'm gonna ask, um, uh, Wendy, hello Wendy. Wendy, Wendy. Are you there? No, okay. She's maybe sleeping. Okay, good. Uh, Sarah, do me a favor. Read the, the, the two sentences on the left. Read the two sentences. She works with actors on their accent. Uh, no, the two. Uh, the two, uh huh. The two sentences. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. Okay, now read the other one. <clears throat> a dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actor actors on their accents. Okay, now read it again, but just with who or with that? Only one word. A, a dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accent. Okay, now please read again these two. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accent. 
Okay, you have done it perfectly. Okay, what is the what is what is the difference that you feel, Sarah? When you read the two sentences and when you read this. Teacher. Uh -huh, Marlene. I think that is the first one. Uh, a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with the, with actors under accent. Uh -huh. uh, in this one, talk with she. In the other one, talk with another another person. No, non specific. Um, no. That's, that's one thing. Yes. But there is one more thing. In the think, think about the communicative way of the language. In communication, which one do you think? Okay, for me, for example, if you ask me, I will recommend you to use the second one. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. I would recommend you to use this. But why? But why? Oh, I, I think that probably because uh, in the second one, uh, it sounds like that matches a little bit better because they connect the first part of the sentence with uh, who and with the rest of the sentence to sound okay. more eloquent, as you said it before. Exactly, right? If you say this one, a dialect coach is language specialist, post, stop, she works with actors on their accent, stop okay that's why you know when sarah read it you know she did it perfectly because she read the one one sentence stop and she read the second sentence and in the other one she did not stop so then when you use a dialect coach who's a language specialist who works with actors on their accents there is a more fluency knowing the pronunciation not in the speaking but fluency of ideas Okay, so in one sentence, you throw everything you think about a dialect coach. Okay, so that's why it is uh, important and more. You see that the English sounds okay, more fluent. Okay, there is more eloquence. Now, what uh, Marlene was saying also that she works. In this case, uh, we omit. Okay, the the subject. Uh, she because we are going to use who who is the person right because teacher, we are we already know that we're talking about she yes teacher yep i i i think that we use who or that for to use to identify people mm -hmm. it's really yes that's correct because if we are talking about um, an object we are going to use which. If we are talking about a place, we are going to use where. Okay. For example, if you ask me, I would I would say that uh, San Salvador is the city where I was born. San Salvador is the city where I was born. Know who I was born, right? In that case, Luis is the teacher who was born in San Salvador. Okay, in the first one, I am referring to the place, the location. San Salvador is the city where, yes? So that's why you are correct, actually. In this case, we use who or that because we're talking about people. If we're talking about a place, we're going to use where. And if you are going to talk about a object, which, okay? Or object or thing, right? Whatever you have, okay? Uh, uh, for example, the you can say um, Fast and Furious One is the movie which I enjoy the most. Okay, I'm going to use that I enjoy the most. So you're going to use that one. Okay, good. So then uh, we can practice if you want. Uh, we can go, we have time. We have uh, today and tomorrow to, to have this topic very clear. So let's practice with sentences uh, with, uh, let's say for example, the, the first one defining, write a sentence in the chat, okay? Using for example, the, 
and if you hear like examples I gave you, right? Using who or that. Uh, for example, um, you can use jobs, a mechanic is a person, a guy, a man, a girl, a woman, whatever, a person who, or you can use that, no problem, who uh, fixes cars. Uh -huh. There you uh, go. Talking about the, uh, the first part, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the two sentences that we just uh, uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, the first one on the left, I mean, is is that a real uh, relative uh, relative uh, clause or, or is it a halfway relative clause? Which one? I mean, at, at the a one on the coach? left. A I mean, uh -huh. No, that is, is a that complete a No, that is a complete center. A dialect coach is a language specialist. That is one. And they say uh, she works with actors on their accent. He or she works in actors. Okay, so what you are doing here is you have two ideas. Okay, and you make one when you use who or that. And that's why I said, right, that you make your English sound more fluent. And you are giving the information because if you say a dialect coach is a language specialist, okay, but I am a language specialist too because I teach English, right? But uh, but here says dialect coach. Ah, okay. Then you're not a dialect coach. You are a, probably you can say uh, I am a language coach because I teach mm -hmm. a language. I don't teach a dialect. But if you if I teach a dialect, is if I speak, for example. The Spanish from El Salvador, the Spanish from Mexico, okay? Uh, if I speak Spanish from Guatemala, that is, that's what they refer to dialect, right? So when you say a dialect coach is a language specialist who works, okay, with actors on their accent so that the actor imitates, uses the intonation, the accent, of the person who uh, that he is representing, okay? I don't remember the name of the movie, but there is a movie with Brad Pitt, uh, when he's from, he's, he's a gypsy, and he speaks as an English, but terrible English that nobody understands. That's from uh, Wales, so un acento de Gales, but, he was living, he was living in Wales for six months to learn how to speak uh, like that people, uh, like those people do. Okay, so then, you know, and this is the, the orientation or the help of the, let's say the dialect coach. He said, okay, now if you want to learn the language, go and stay there for one month, two months. So they prepare before the move. Okay, so then, yes, there, these are two sentences, separate, but then you make it in one. So that's why it is a defining relative close, because the information in both is necessary to connect and have the full idea, okay, of what a dialect coach is and what the dialect, dialect coach does, what he is and what he does. In one sentence here, a dialect coach is language specialist to work with actors on their accents. You are saying what he is and what he does. Okay? And it's in, uh, the, in the information is important. Oh, but, you know, but uh, what I was saying is that, of course, that I, I was thinking about that, that, mm -hmm. that the one on the left, I mean, uh, taken as, as uh, two uh, ideas, okay? Mm -hmm. Are uh, for example, uh, I I know it's, this is from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Are this is a halfway relative clause, and the one in the in the right, I mean taking into account as a whole, as a whole as a whole thing. This is a complete, a uh, complete defining uh, relative clause. Is, is that oh, correct? Okay. I mean, 
The one on the left is halfway, and the other one is a complete relative loss. Is that right, or am I wrong? Uh, probably, yes, you're right. The only thing that it, the first one on the left is not, it's not that it is uh, halfway. It's just that it's going to be uh, sentences isolated, separated. But you can uh -huh. also use, you can also use, the difference will be that if you use the second one, the, the finding relative close, what you show is that you know how to use and manipulate the language. But you can say a dialect coach is a language specialist. Uh, he or she works with actors on their accents, and he or she works especially in movies. Okay? So then you can continue sentence by sentence, but that English would sound more basic. Okay? Like, okay, okay, this person doesn't know how to connect one sentence with another sentence. In the defining clause, then we are using those connectors correctly because there are other other clauses, other ways to connect words. But in this case, you say, okay, he knows how to connect this. Okay, so that's why I wouldn't, the only thing I wouldn't use is that it's halfway uh, defining clause because the other one is a complete sentence. And a complete sentence is a complete thought. A dialogue coach is a language especially. It's a complete thought. You have subject, verb, and complement. She works with actors on their accents. You have a subject, verb, and a complement. So those are sentences. But when you put them together, they sound better. And you are being more fluent. Okay. So I guess we stop here because we don't have more time. Tomorrow we're going to continue with this. Pro uh, think about sentences with uh, a... Defining, and then okay. we are also going to practice with the non-defining. Uh, I will send you also some extra information, okay, so that you can uh, practice more. Just let me go quickly through this. We have Ibrahim is here, Joel Emanuel. I think he was early here. And then we have Jorge Alberto. Okay, Joselino. You're here. Yes. Present teacher. Julio Cesar was here too. Uh, Carla Selena was here. Carla Rene is here. Okay, then we have Luis Eduardo. Marlene. Present teacher. Yes. Good. Marlene is here too. Present teacher. Melissa Stephanie. Present. Yes, you are. Michelle Beatriz, no, it's Michelle. Oh, Michelle, are you here today? Present. Oh, yes, there you are. Neftali. Yes, we have Oscar Alexander. Present teacher. Yes, Oscar Dulio, yes. Romeo. Present. Romeo Vladimir. Present teacher. Good. Sarah Elizabeth. Pre present. Sophia Elizabeth. Sophie, Sophie, no, Sophie's not here today. Wendy, yes. And then we have Xiomara. Present teacher. And Jenny. Did I mention everybody? Present teacher. Present teacher, I'm here. Hector, who? Yeah. Yes, Hector, 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 Hector. Yes, I mentioned. Yeah, about. Yes, Ivan. Yes, Francisco. Giovanni, Hector Stan, Giovanni Stanley. And Hector Ivan. Okay. Good. And Catherine too. Catherine is dead this year. Okay, people, thank you very much. So present teacher. Yes, Francisco. <clears throat> I have you here on the list. Good. Okay, so that's all for today. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Take care. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. Good evening. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good evening. Bye. Bye.